Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to talk about today. Good. Uh, I'm not convinced what we're going to talk about is a bad thing yet. Okay. Has potential okay. to be bad. Has Great. potential to be good as well. We're going to throw this out to you guys. But we're also going to really talk about how this whole thing, we're, the subject, is so unnecessary. And how close it is to being something really cool yet... Similar with everything in BFA, just slightly misses the mark and shoots it in a completely argumentative sort of quagmire that's going to upset some players and, and annoy others and make other people relatively happy, I think. Okay. We're talking about the Benthic Lottery. Oh, the boy. The Benthic Lottery. So, as many of you have probably realized recently, if you've been checking out streams and taking part in discussions, and of course preparing for raid, so this is really a raider topic, um, is that the Benthic Armor has the or is in many cases for several classes and specs actually the best possible armor you can get for your character for the entire tier and that is good i'm completely okay with that i want to say that right now i, I think that's completely okay uh that's it it's your bis we actually have a return to bis that's what people wanted right hey oh they give with one hand and they take no it's not you guys think that it's not well here's why i oh okay oh, let's let's just get to the video i've, I've already paused twice three times in one minute take away with the other because yes that's kind of what we wanted okay. dude but that's not how we wanted it i mean can we just get it nice and wrapped up in a nice tidy package why must it be this way blizzard i don't know uh so if you're unsure as to how uh, a max upgraded benthic piece which is 425 can e okay. even come close to beating a 455 which is what the max titan forge uh will be when the gear ceiling it's the secondary the stats day, so or the the effect it's simple. The Benthic armor comes with affixes, right? Yeah, You've that's awesome. You've seen this in the new zone Nazjatar. And some of those are... They're suffering from the same problem as the essences, which means they are generic bonuses across a whole slew of classes and specs. Yeah. One thing we know. All the classes and True. specs play differently. That's a good thing. Variety is the spice of life. Uh, but Blizzard is fighting this war with themselves that their gear is boring. They're fully aware of it. They're quite admit, uh, ad, uh, open about it, to be honest. To me, uh, we did look with at this that rare big stuff. talk at a convention with the guy who designed World of Warcraft's loot way back in the day. Uh, I remember where this. they knew back then. It's like, our loot we is fuck this. boring, dude. Uh, and it kind of needs to be because when we make super weird items, it tends to fuck up the game somewhere. Yeah, uh, it and should. that really screws That's things what makes up. it good. And I know some people are like, screw balance, let's just have fun. That's fine in like a sandbox world of like Diablo and things like that. But when you apply that to a persistent world MMO, it really sucks. I've played an imbalanced MMO. This is the only thing that happens is everybody plays one spec. Because yeah. that's the imbalanced one. Everybody plays it. And the whole game becomes just like uh, Hunters. That would be it. The entire... Final destination, Fox only, no items. Like, what he's saying is kind of true. You go and you watch a private server, uh, a private server video, they're, they have, like, you know, 20 rogues, 20 warriors, and, you know, somehow there's other people in there as well. Uh, that, that's true. Like, obviously, people always gravitate towards a meta, and, and this is going to happen in any game that's not dynamic and changing regularly. Uh, I don't really know how much you can really fix that. A game would be hunters because they're broken right and then okay. suddenly it's like rogues the broken one because yep. we're having all this imbalance crazy fun everybody just plays a rogue it's super boring it doesn't work uh it generally ruins the whole game so these affixes are things like bonus critical strike damage right okay. something simple but remember this is on one item and this item still comes with secondary stats and main stats it's not like it's void of all the other stuff that the mythic piece would have yeah, but it just also says has the these bonus stack. Now, if you're a character, I'm just making this simple. If you're a character who crits heavy and a lot, That's then me. bonus critical strike damage is massive. It's so big. It's so much extra damage yep. that even 30 it's item be levels fucking of great. raw stats can't beat the fact that your character is producing all this extra damage from these bonus critical strikes, right? So that's how you need to think about it. This is how powerful some of these affixes are. Now, it varies on a spec-by-spec -spec ba basis of how okay. many benefit pieces are best for you. In some cases, it's like four pieces. Of I think for me, it's like three or four. Best in slot. It's something like that. It's world insane. World Quest uh, easy content. They're the best armor you're going to get. And the important thing to remember this, and this is why some people are really having a problem with this. Okay. Uh, is that it's the best armor you can get before like the new raid and the new mythic plus season even starts you have like potentially four slots 
done already. If you have a crafting profession, or two crafting professions, that's another three slots of gear which are pretty much done. Because with crafting professions, you can get your best possible stats. Even though, again, the item level is it's lower. It's going to be great. You can get the best possible stats and a guaranteed gem slot, which is huge. Huge bonus to your character. Yep. And it would take a ridiculously good, super rare, really difficult to get drop to replace an idyllic piece of gear, which is what you can get from profession slots. And that takes up another three. So that's like seven of your character slots. The neck, obviously, are not going to replace because it's the heart of Azeroth. Oh, so that's shit. Eight. That's too bad. Uh, and then we think about Azerite armor, which is relatively abundant. And it, once you've got it, it doesn't do anything else, right? Because it's kind of harking back to this old one, the old system of tier gear. Uh, where you can kind of see the conflict in what Blizzard's trying to do now, where they're still trying to mix it with like the old systems, and it's causing this like muddle, and it's really they don't horrible, know what they don't know what they want to do. Right armor, That's basically what it is. They don't slots, know what they want to do, which are like done and dusted. So you have in some cases like up to nearly eleven slots of gear, which are done, like really, really quickly when the new season starts. Not only that, the remaining slots, which are like trinkets and weapons and things like that, they can also be gained from Mythic Plus, uh, which is a non-stop farmable content. That, Obviously, I, I, I hate that. Like, the fact that you have to go and farm Mythic Plus for these trinkets and gear and stuff, I found it, it's just so boring. Like, it just, it just takes forever. And if Mythic Plus didn't have Titan Forging, I'd think it was fine. But the problem is that Mythic Plus does have Titan Forging, which means that you have to go in there constantly and do Waycrest Manor to farm out some bullshit trinket, and then whenever the next season comes out, you have to do it again. And you never get the best item. And so I actually, yeah, I'm happy that the benthic items are in the game because at least then you have the item that you want and you, you can make it and craft it yourself. And it's Biss. You need a Titan Fortune there, but you get the idea that you can just keep trying. And you can get a lucky there, but overall, some players are looking at this going, I have so little character progression to look forward to before the new content even really comes out. And that's a really sad fact for a lot of people to face, and understandably so. Um, what are the pros to this system? Let's talk about the pros. Obviously, from like a casual player's perspective, we can look at this and say, I'm getting really good armor without having to take part in any multiplayer content at all. And we know there's a lot of people who, for some fucking reason, and it still blows my mind, play a massively multiplayer online game and desperately do not want to take part in the multiplayer aspects of it and are more than happy to find yeah. world quests. Over yeah, that, that's every true. Game. And we've seen many posts recently of people who are doing emissary quests like seven or eight times a day on seven or eight different characters and that's their gameplay, which is hours and hours of gameplay, but they're literally just cycling through emissary quests over and over and over and over again. Sounds very fun. Uh, I, I mean, I, as I said, I, I think that it, the traits and everything are fine. And I, I the, this is like one of the examples where this benthic armor is bad for the top, like maybe three or 5% of players, but everywhere below that, it gives all of those players a way to actually progress and move their character forward that they have a certain degree of control over. Yes, obviously the benthic armor is RNG what you roll, but it's not RNG what you upgrade. So you basically just roll until you get the item that you want with a socket, and then you upgrade that up. I think that is a very, very good combination of deterministic RNG versus, sorry, deterministic uh, upgrades and power with a little bit of RNG. I think that's fine. It's my opinion. Um, and now they're, they're, get, they're probably pretty happy that they're going to get the best piece of armor. Now, I say this is a Raider problem. You. And it is, because this yeah, it stuff is a Raider works problem. in Nazjatar, Mechagon, I think, and the Eternal Palace, the new raid. Okay. It doesn't work in Mythic Plus. So the Benthic armor doesn't take effect of these extra bonuses in Mythic Plus. So for right. that, you will need to get extra gear. It doesn't work in PvP either. So it's a very Raider-specific problem. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I don't want everyone to lose their minds. Like, oh, everybody's getting the best gear in the world, dead easy. Uh, no, but for Raiders, this is the case. Uh, and it's also led to the Benthic Lottery. What is the Benthic Lottery? Well, as people have started working out that this Benthic armor is so powerful, uh, the trick has been, of course... To get as many capped alts as you have, throw them through Nazjatar very quickly, and on your first and time you get through, the 40 you get like tokens. 80 mana pearls, which is the currency to buy Benthic yep. armor. Each piece only costs 5 mana pearls, 
So you can run a character through there, and in an hour or so, you'll have 80 mana pearls, and then you can just buy an absolute ton of braces, if braces happens to be your best I don't best see anything wrong piece. with this. Send them all to your main character. So this whole purpose of your alt character is just to get mana pearls, to buy this armor that this character is never going to use, send it over to your main character, and then just sit there and play the lottery and hope that it will proc the correct piece, because there are multiple... Uh, affixes per so it's like because you're not a top raider well you're absolutely right varian i'm not do you think that the perceived problem by top raiders with this system should influence the entire game like preach is a he's a very high-end raider just because some players are no yeah of course not of course not like, this is a good system for 95% of the player base that doesn't even real it, it it hurts a little bit of the progression that, like, high-end raiders have. But, I mean, the progression system was RNG to begin with. It was a shit progression system anyway. Just keep watching! Like, four or five different types of braces. Get the right one with a gem slot, because that means that you have the best one. And that's the one you can upgrade indefinitely, and you'll be fine and dandy. So this is what it's led a lot of players to be doing yeah. who care about character progression. So I think we should probably mention here the guys who think this is toxic. If if, you're, if your mindset is that people who play an RPG care about their character progression and want their characters to be the best it could possibly can Sounds be toxic, good. I'm kind of lost in the discussion with you. I really am at this point. Yeah, they're it fucking idiots. perfectly normal to me that if you're playing an RPG, you want your character to be as strong as it possibly can be. That's what would make sense. I don't see why uh, that I don't see this grow this seemingly growing mindset and it might not be the mindset that that is somehow a bad thing uh, it seems like almost pointing at people for doing well and going you suck like a schoolyard bully thing that's what it feels like to me anyway okay um, <clears throat> so this is what's happening uh, this is what's going on in the game right now I'm taking part in it myself because I'm a raider of course I want to get the best armor my character can I'd be get doing if the I'm same going thing if I was raiding. raid facing very difficult bosses of course I would my character being the best it can be will probably help <laughs> in order to defeat those bosses probably uh, especially yes especially when it's multiplied by my entire guild doing the exact same thing yes as are most guilds across the entire uh, player base right now who are looking forward to the new eternal palace raid okay now the negatives of this. Let's be reasonable here. The negatives of this. Uh, one, much less character progression to look forward to in general, right? Uh, that's just going to be a thing. Um, the potential for farm raiding is what bothers me the most, actually. Uh, along with the next point I'm going to make. These two, these next two points are my most concerning. Uh, if, there's very l if there's very little character progression to be done, uh, once the bosses die, w what's the incentive to keep playing at all? It's kind of the same issue we had with Uldia where it became very apparent that the gear was so seasonal that farming raids and sticking together with your teammates and doing that kind of thing was kind of becoming a total waste of time. It is. It's a complete waste of time. Like, going back after you clear the raid once, there's no reason to go back. Why? So you can get the same piece of gear, but this time it has a socket on it, maybe? You can get the same piece of gear, but maybe he hits five item levels higher? What kind of a fucking idiot dedicates specific nights of their week to go in there to roll the lottery on a piece of gear to hopefully get five extra item levels on it, only for it to get replaced three months later? You've got to be a fucking moron. So who cares about what happens for farm raids? I mean, they can farm the other pieces anyway, right? And... I really just don't see how this is any sort of a meaningful uh, problem for anyone. Except for, like, maybe a few no-lifers that want to progress every single piece of game. It's how video games work. It's not how WoW used to work, and WoW was better when it didn't work that way. Same with mounts, what the fuck? No, because mounts never become invalidated later on. If I have Invincible, I have Invincible. It's not like there's Season 2 Invincible and this time he's red. Uh, and we could just play another game together. Um, the problem is that destroys guilds, right? The, I'm sure there's some people out there who probably never raided who believe that guilds can kill the last boss and then just like dis not disband but just stop playing and then come back next season. Yeah. Um, I really hope people don't think that's a good thing. Uh, the whole point is to build a community and work together to progress and make your guild more powerful. That's that's what the whole idea of a guild is in the first place and what MMOs are generally built upon. Yeah. But 
that's a bad thing I'm worried about. Is like once once the boss is dead, it's like there's really okay. nothing I can get from here without super rare Titan Forges. Which, if this is the system going forward, and the next season they do the same thing, whenever the next raid tier comes out, is they release some more casual armor, which we're just going to have to farm bejeweled and unlocking yeah. ley lines and just tagging mobs. Yeah, there I you mean, go. I did Nash to tie yeah. yesterday with a 3-3-3 rogue. That's how easy it is to complete Najatar and get all these pearls. You don't need anything. You can just go in as a fresh character. Well, and it's get designed that very, way. Very easily. Um, that's obviously a big negative. Like, guilds are just going to be like, well, well I, I want to play. And this is the issue we're into. I want to play World of Warcraft. Yet there's really just no reason for me to do it anymore. Uh, See, this is the thing. Is that I think that, yeah, obviously these high-end players are like, I want to keep playing. But do I think the systems in the game should be changed to create repeat play and repeat rewards for the top 1% of the players? I don't think so. Well, anyway, like what he's saying here is that I, I don't think like Titan Forging, I don't think the problem of Mythic Raiders, right? Mythic Raiders running out of things to do once they've completed the entire Mythic Raid is a problem that Blizzard should solve. I, I, that doesn't seem like it's a problem. Like, you're done. You beat the game. It, it, wow, you, you got it. Okay, awesome. And now maybe you can run it a few more times and maybe get the gear. Um, trying to? No. It, okay, uh, maybe you can get the gear. It, it depends. Um, but you can just get best in slot and then wait until the next tier comes out. Or you can do sale runs. You can sell the runs to other people. There's a million different things that guilds can do. And I don't really see the problem, but they want to do mount sales and make money. Well, then they can do that. Uh, it, it's up to them. And uh, they can parse or they can PVP. But the, the point that I'm trying to make here, I don't want to go too much off on a tangent, uh, is that this whole idea that like content always have, has to be infinite for every single type of player is I think toxic and bad for the game. A lot of people get a lot out of being finished with something, finishing something, being done. Yeah, obviously Mythic Raiders want to play constantly, but I'm sorry, like eight eight weeks in the farm, I don't think anybody's looking forward to doing the same fucking bosses again. Like I I, I did Mythic and like Heroic raiding, uh, like Heroic back when Heroic was Mythic for years, ever since Burning Crusade, and after a while, I just got fucking tired of it. And that's sad. It's really, really sad for those guys. And I, that's a really understandable point those guys are coming in with. Okay. Uh, the second and other most concerning point I have is how well-tuned is Eternal Palace going to be if there are some characters, which includes mine, by the way, yeah. which will be almost at their maximum potential damage output on day one. How well-tuned is this raid going to be? Because we're going to run into one of two scenarios, potentially. Uh, which is either Blizzard hasn't really prepared for this, and there are signs of that given yeah, the fact that they've recently fine. nerfed gems uh, because they just suddenly realized they're way too powerful. And they've also given gem slots guaranteed to profession gear, and benthic gear can get yeah. gem slots, and now they've realized gem slots are too powerful. Um, you should have seen that coming. Uh, which makes me think, is the Eternal Palace going to either one be completely squashed because there are going to be players going into there that that's don't fine. have any gear progression really happening. Uh, they're going to get that's, that's, the, the that's bits fine. they miss relatively quickly and they're going to be super, super strong compared okay. to what you would ordinarily see in a raid tier, which is some sort of character progression week on week on week. Obviously, the World First Guilds try and push past that as much as possible, uh, but this is a general guild that's not won't fine. Into what the that, fuck? Whereas this time around... That's not fine. What the fuck? Wolfen, just a minute. Wolf in 1109. If I had your armory, I can guarantee you're probably like maybe a normal mode or a heroic road raider mode raider. Or maybe, you know what, maybe you do mythic. Maybe you've killed mythic Jaina and your guild is world 500th. The problem that you have with high-end guilds clearing content quickly is completely percept it's completely in your own head. It doesn't matter. Like, this whole idea that these guilds and these fights need to be as hard so Method can't just wipe the raid in, like, the first day is stupid. That's, again, them designing the game for the top 1% of the player base and then fucking everybody else up. Like, who cares about 1% of the guilds? They should make the fights fulfilling and good, not, un like, 
like super ridiculously hard just to make sure that some really really high-end guild that literally plays the game more often than somebody goes to their fucking job is able to be challenged by it. it, it it's a completely stupid notion games are made for fun well it's not even about fun it's about making the game fulfilling for everyone and not just designing it for some like micro community people say that about the ease of leveling though that's it's a completely different paradigm because you're doing leveling by yourself and it's paced on your own time. Uh, would be true that wouldn't have four different difficulty levels. Oh, I, 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 that's the problem, right? And how 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 is that done for the game? Good point. Yeah, you're right. So they solved that problem by just creating different versions for the raid. And oh wow, now everybody gets to do it and nobody cares. A lot of guilds are going to be in the scenario where your characters are very, very powerful from day one. Yeah. Um, and maybe squash the raid, which would be super to, uh, server where one Rust thing Fed raiders really don't like is a raid that's like, it's and it's done. We waited months for this. Ugh. The other side of it is, are they going but to... But who is we? This, this is the thing, right? Is who is we? Is we, you know, uh, method? Because, like, if you're... The, the thing is, like, who is we? Like, this is, like, the top 100 guilds in the world. Uh, everybody else is probably just playing the game naturally. Uh, I, that's what I'm so confused by. Uh, is it nobody else? Good players? It, there's not that, it's not just good players because there are plenty of good players that don't raid because they don't have time. Uh, it, it's so much more than that. You're unironically making casual player arguments? Well, I am because I care about the health of the game. Like, I'm the, most, I'm the biggest advocate for casual players in WoW that we've ever had. And everybody thinks that I'm not. I, I'm yeah, I'm the biggest advocate of casual players. Like I, I want casual players to have a good experience. Or the reason I want to get LFR out of the game because I think it's bad for casual players. Casual players are what the game is built around. Like, what what do you mean? Like it, it's bad for the, it, it it's it's a bad experience for them. They don't enjoy it. Uh, you're talking about Mythic scaling. Uh, Mythic, it's not for casuals or most. You're right. But the fact that they had to make Mythic is because they had this idea in their head that they had to create an entire subset of raids all for these top 100 guilds, and it's caused the entire development of raids to become completely contrived and based around the highest type of player and having too many mechanics. It's too complex. Most people don't understand the bosses. They don't understand the mechanics, so they have to make them super easy in LFR. The damage Damage is cosmetic. Nobody feels good whenever they complete the boss because there's nothing they have to learn. And it just is a bullshit. It, it, it's just bullshit. That's all. It, it's just fucking bullshit. It's a terrible system. Tune it sort of like Mythic Una, where Unat was tuned around having best characters, like characters that could barely even potentially Please upgrade invite me their if you have a, a realm up for, for us tanking, whatever. And try and they get could this barely map. do that, and the boss was designed around that. And they're designing it this way, which means mechanically it's going to be extraordinarily hard. Yeah. Which again is just not an ideal. It's not an ideal to have boss uh, reached a point where, like, Unat's okay in my mind. I know a lot of people are upset about how Unat was handled, but for me it made perfect sense. Mythic Unat was designed for guilds that had already killed Jaina uh, in the short window between the next one and gave them a chance to push for something harder. Whereas guilds still working on Jaina weren't going to progress onto Una. It was in a nice niche spot where they could play around with it. Okay. Although I did see a number of people annoyed, even though they weren't particularly taking part in it, that more guilds didn't do Mythic Una. However, Mythic Una was designed with a, a very specific area of the community in mind, given the short window it was going to be accessible. And of course, given the essences were coming, which crush Una. <laughs> they yeah, really destroy I, I Una, so it's that. got no challenge whatsoever. And therefore, getting the cutting edge or whatever is a real not worthwhile thing so yeah <laughs> is it eternal power is going to be tuned extraordinarily hard and looking at how ashara is designed it has it, it could easily be that way where it's just extraordinarily mind-bogglingly mind-bogglingly no, no. hard and i'd also say on a personal note here as ashara is based on line of sight mechanics it's not that fun, right? It's not that fun to be out of line of sight of being something that you have to deal with all the time. Yeah, of And course. having to just stand and not do damage while you hide or have to go around corners and pillars and things, which could get very tedious in terms of that progression. It's not a fight I'm particularly looking forward to, I'll be honest with you. Uh, anyway, that's the Benthic problem. Love to see your thoughts on that. I really would. Is it a good thing, having all this accessible gear, or is it spoiling it for you that the best gear in an RPG 
literally in multiple slots is now coming from world quests which is unnecessary talking about necessary let's be honest though uh in vanilla wow uh the lion art helm just came from blacksmithing uh, there are plenty of items that were valid all the way up until like AQ40 that were just crafting gear. So th- there are plenty of examples of this being the case previously in the game and it being a good thing, like Dark Moon cards being really good in Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, we had the Dark Moon card being really good, uh, the Fathoms card being good here that you're able to uh, to get very early on in the expansion. Uh, th- there's a lot of examples of that happening. I actually think that it's completely fine, personally. Uh, everything has to come from raids. It shouldn't. In order to have the best character possible, you should have to do all of the content possible. I don't like the idea of Blizzard trying to create micro-communities. Uh, it's been bad for the game. It's so close to not being the case. So my issue here is that's all that stuff, right? That's all the Benthic Armor stuff as it is right now. Let's dispense with that for now. Why in the fuck are we even having this problem at this point? Why in the actual fuck are we having this issue? Because Blizzard is fixated on random rewards. Surprise mechanics! Oh boy! That's why, is they're fixated on these random rewards. And they want to have different levels of RNG that keep you fucking turning that hamster wheel forever. That's why. That's the whole reason. Like, that's why we have Titan Forging. That's why there's so much RNG. That's why you can never accomplish a goal in the game anymore. Because Blizzard puts up all these artificial barriers to make sure it doesn't happen. This whole concept of gear being ubiquitous across every aspect of the game... Yep is just so boring yep. and tedious yep. and annoying yep. and only leads True. to discussions like this. It only leads to people being pissed off or being like happy for what I believe are the wrong reasons, but they're of happy, they're so they're happy. Mad. Right? I'm not going to try and take happiness away. I will. But why in the actual tale of in Christ Ooh. is this even a thing? Let me explain. Najatar and Mechagon are so primed to have an amazing, wonderfully creative set of armor designed around being in that zone. Where they could have done totally a a huge number of affixes, which made being in those zones super fun. Okay. Off the top of my goddamn head, right? Najatar armor, Benthic armor, that these guys who've been living there and struggling against the Naga for 10,000 years have come up with themselves, which make... Being in Nazjatar, a way of survival and a way of dealing with the issues there. You could have had armor. <coughs> Excuse me, I've still got the flu. You could have had armor in here. Naz- come, here comes Preach with a dozen ideas that's better than Boyzerud has ever thought of anything in the game, right? Preach has a lot of really, really great ideas for the game. I, I wish that Boyzerud would consult with him more often, but unfortunately, Preach exploited a potion six months ago, so Boyzerud now will never talk to him because he committed the cardinal sin of exploiting the game and leveling his characters up too fast. That gave you really cool, someone's going to hell, useful features. They could have had a chest, pe- a chest piece that literally came with a trident on it. That actually visually stuck out on your character. And this trident allows you to throw it extreme long distances, Ooh. do great damage to rare mobs, Ooh. and pull you towards the target. Ooh. That's a lot of problems people have with zones like Najatar. Tagging rare mobs and getting to them. Ooh. So what you could have is this fucking trident that you throw, and it tags you there. You could yep. also have had nets with dealing with fish people. So if you don't want the rare tagging thing, because now maybe you've got flying or tagging That's mobs good. I like it. your character, now you could have had nets which actually slow whole you areas more of things. Than just a mate. Sorry about that. Someone mm. just subscribed to me while I was talking. My apologies. Thank you for you. I was so fucking <laughs> confused, dude. You could have had a, a different chess piece, which applies nets, which slows everything or okay. groups things together. He, you could have had a belt pack, right which covers your character in chum, yes, massively increasing the radius at which you attract mobs so you can do big AoE pulls. Ye- oh, Similarly, shit. You could have had a belt that covers you in kelp and stuff to the scenery, allowing you to blend in so you pull way less enemies. Oh, shit. There are so good. many easy to that's think that's a really ideas. good idea. i love that capes that increase the drop chance of mana pearls if mana pearls is what you're fighting uh, looking for that increase the drop chance of rare items that you're looking for increase the drop see, chance of reputation see exactly items. what i was saying all these things that you might want to focus your character on 
things this is that great. allow you to instantly shoot to the sky or even summon a, a manta ray temporarily, right? You could have had shoulders that have some sort of manta ray blinkers on Thanks them. This is the all two, visually and cosmetic applied to your character, which allow you to attract local wildlife, yeah. allow you to do various things. And it's all contained within Najatar. Guess what would happen then, in my opinion? This is my guess. People would come up and design their own Najatar gear set for how they like to do Najatar. Has no effect on the raid whatsoever. Has no effect on Mechagon. Has no effect anywhere else. But when I'm in Najatar with this gear, I'm fucking awesome. I would like that I'm a lot. fucking awesome. I've got all this yeah, that'd be awesome. that allows me to do this stuff. Let's go to Mechagon. Same thing again. How in the actual titty-loving Christ oh. did we not think maybe, about given me. the facts and the nature and the theme of this zone, that we can actually build essentially a modified set of power armor which works in Mechagon? We have the robot there. This is what I'm saying. We are... We have the technology. We can rebuild him. That's true. Uh, holy shit, man. I never even thought of it. Don't just because you're Cody fan. Um, EJ, thanks for the 20 bucks. Appreciate that. McConnell annoying. Go eat my friend. Two swap McConnell. Thank you guys very much, Tony, for the $10. Appreciate that. Hello, Asman. I logged my vanilla alley warlock the other day and discovered I have the epic dread seed quest mats. If you ever need to kill the rare boss or transmog or stream content, I'd love to help you, bro. Thank you very much, Amalio, for the uh, $5. Uh, Tom Kerr, thank you very much for the tier three sub. I appreciate that, man. Are any of these skills even ready for mythic? Eight of eight, heroic? None of them? I don't know about that. I have no idea. Placing top in the world without giving everything we had. Cap, cap, cap. I don't know about that. Power blaster. Thank you very much for the I appreciate that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I read all of those. Uh, the Warlock thing, I, I don't know. I mean, I've already done that before on my stream, but maybe sometime we could do it if people were interested in seeing the uh, the Warlock hidden boss. I just wanted to catch up with those. So close to having something really cool. And, so and by the way, we are going to be doing the speed run. The speed run for BOD after we finish this, uh, this video. We're going to try to clear it in under an hour. Yeah, no, we could have this whole storyline where it's like, well, I don't want to modify and rip off my arm and replace it with an armor. Right. But I would gladly wear some blocky robotic armor while I'm in Mechagon, because it only works in Mechagon, right? It's only got yeah. all these bonuses in Mechagon. Sure. Which allow me to do some really cool fucking shit. I can apply jetpacks to it, right? And that's visually attached to it. Onto this cool, blocky looking armor. Of course, you can transmog it away if you really don't like it. Right. But you could have had a ton of fun modifying this armor that straps your character to make you look like a robot. And similarly, that would be fucking awesome. Similarly to what we had in Najata, you could yeah. have modified your armor so that it blends you into the environment. So it's got like radio oh, interference, like camouflage. things like that. You can apply okay. treads so you can move much faster. Okay. So now you literally have fucking wheels that you can roll around on because we're in a robotic, mechanized Makes zone. Sense. We're building giant arachno spiders. Kind of can I not get something up like your what Spider-Man has, which allows me to By fucking shoot things out the sides? Right? Can't I get okay. that? Why not? It's a fucking world quest zone. What's the problem? Why can't I get that that works there? And it's powered by the local area. So I can't, obviously I can't go to a different zone and work it. There's a power source in Mechagon provided by the Rust Bolt Resistance, which allows it to work there. It requires energy cells to work. That right? would be awesome. All this stuff That'd be amazing. could be done I'd love it. to make that zone so much more fun. Because while I'm there, I can modify it. I can do paint jobs. Again, we're so close to having this be really cool, in my opinion. I'm making this zone super cool, and it has no effect anywhere else. If I take this gear to uh, a dungeon or something, it still has its raw stats just as Benthic gear does, but it doesn't have any of these bonuses. And similarly, when I get gear from Najatar, uh, the Eternal Palace, I should say, it has bonuses and affixes and things that work inside there because of the environment I'm in. There's guaranteed to be some power source, some energy, something that's happening there. Can we, uh, right now, I just want to say right now, He's in chat. Can we uh, at Mikkel Reavy and say congrats, bro? He just got flying. Congrats, dude. It, it, it's, been, it's been a while. Uh, I just saw him in guild chat. He just got his mount right there. Uh, nice fucking job, dude. It's about goddamn time. Congratulations, Zach. Nice fucking job. Okay, just one second. I, I want to make sure I, I pause that. I, I said something about it. Congratulations, dude. Uh, maybe a little bit late, the but that's okay. Power of Nazoth, which lurks below, okay. which is allowing some extra bonuses that really help me play around inside there. But it works there. I'm not going to be terrible if I go to the old zone. I'm not going to be terrible. It's not like I'm not wearing gear when I go back to Najatara Mechagon and I have raw stat gear. If I only raid and I need to do dailies, my gear is fine. Is it yeah. tailor-made and designed and going to provide many more options for me? No. But what I would do as a raider, I absolutely would do this, is I would have my raid set. If I was going to do Najatar, I would switch to my Najatar set, which is visually and cosmetically themed to that zone and provides me a ton of bonuses. Well, while visually, I'm in there. doesn't matter. I would even have the extraction button be something that's dynamic. 
depending on how far I'm away, if I'm close, it changes what it does. So I can play around with just one extra button, which allows me to do all kinds of extra things with my character. One thing, I, I so I, I agree with what he's saying, but I also don't think the two things, the, the, the current system and his proposed system should be mutually exclusive. I like the idea of being able to get content from world quests and get items from world quests that you can work towards with some sort of a deterministic, uh, you know, uh, direction. And you're able to get those items and work towards those. Those types of things being really good in raids, I think is awesome. And I would like to see more elements of the game. That's why I really like Essences too, for the same reason. It's because you had to do different content outside of your your just your lane of content in order to get sometimes the best essences in the game. And I think that's really what makes the game the world of Warcraft. And I don't like the idea that every single system should only be this closed system that doesn't interact with and overlay and you know, just overlap with the other better system or not better system, but the other systems in the game. Like, I'll be honest. This might say this is going to make like five people mad. I can guarantee it's be five people mad whenever I say this. I liked that the pet battles in Najdatar and, and uh, Mechagon gave you a lot of extra reputation. I like that. Because that made pet battles relevant. It made them matter. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Easy as fuck in my mind. And way more fun. Okay. And we don't end up in this discussion where it's like, why the fuck is the best possible armor in an RPG coming from playing Bejeweled? Which is a legitimate argument we're having right now. Right? Again, I'm not convinced it's a good or a bad thing. We'll see how it plays out. It has potential to be good. Yeah. It has potential to be bad. I'm just saying that for me, there's so many more opportunities to have way, way more fun with this stuff, right? Way, way more fun, more interesting stuff, more player customization, uh, in each of these zones and make me probably want to do that. I could kind of see myself if I could play around with my armor and make a big stupid like fucking uh, Lost in space armor set. Warning, warning. Oh shit. Is that Star Wars? What the fuck? While I'm in Mechagon, I would probably have more fun. I probably would if I could color it and do all this kind of fuck, stuff Which man. we know the functionality of this stuff time. is in the game. It's, it's in Mechagon right now, but it's just used in a sort of base ground level way. Okay. Maybe I'm way off base here, but am I wrong to think that that would be better? And as I said, it's not like this gear doesn't work in the raids. It just doesn't carry all these extra benefits. So you still go in, fine. And if anybody's going to say, yeah, but uh, won't that really screw up like how much damage I do in the raid versus how much damage I do in X, Y, and Z zone? That's how, that's how it was Notice in ICC. Nothing I've really said is about dealing DPS. That already happened. Any of these bonuses that come in that are like percentage crit increased damage. Uh, does extra damage to certain things. Like, that's boring. It's really boring, and it creates imbalance and problems. Instead, think of fun stuff. Shooting across the zone, throwing a fucking trident like Aquaman. That's a Why not both, man? That's pretty fucking cool to me. Allows me to tag a rare mob that I've seen in the, uh, in the distance. Mm -hmm. Allows me to shoot up and grab things out of the sky without having to wait for a quest item to do it. I can actually just equip a chest piece or a pair of gloves that have something like okay. that so I can Batman around yeah, the sure. fucking place. That and makes you know sense. why? Because that's what the guys who lived there for 10,000 years, that's how they survived. That's how they got their Fathom Ray meat. They had to learn how to do this stuff. And that makes sense yep. to me. That makes sense to me. Anyway, end of rants, end of discussion. In summary, I just feel like so much of this is unnecessary. We have to go into these deep dive conversations about systems that are overlaid and intricate and working together and levels of difficulty to acquire them and all this kind of stuff like we're having with the benthic gear and for me it just feels like it's so unnecessary because it just doesn't need to be this way it really doesn't well here's what they can do they can just make mythic raids drop the best gear so here's what they do you, you take mythic raids uh, and you scale down here's what you do uh, i'll go actually you know what let's finish the video then i'll show you guys what i would do right now there's no reason that people who are really super focused on doing world quests and stuff should also be getting the best in slot raid armor. That, to me, that's nonsense. It doesn't work like that in any other fucking video game in the world. It's so crazy. Except for Classic WoW. It's so crazy. And if it's item level you want, put the item level up to a fucking thousand. I couldn't okay. give a shit. I couldn't give a shit. Nearly every raider in the world right now is dropping their item level for better DPS. That's what they care about. The number on their screen they don't care about. Put the item level of fucking why world quest raid. gear up to 18,000 if it makes those guys happy. I don't give a fuck. I couldn't give a fuck. What I do care about is... He doesn't care. One, this needless convoluted mess of gearing 
where you seemingly at this point have to play every single aspect of the game, whether you like it or not, to enjoy the one thing you do enjoy. And no, it hasn't always been this way. And I think this is another thing that people say. It's always been this way. No, it hasn't. When, did it, when was it this way? Can you tell me how much stuff you had to do before you started raiding? Let's even just go back to Wall as a Draenor. Okay. In fact, most people will tell you they raid log throughout that entire expansion. That's two expansions. Well, yeah, that, yeah, a lot of raiders right? love In log. Legion is when it really picked they up. They didn't have to do anything. Farming and fucking AP and all this kind of stuff. This endless grind that needed to take place. Yeah, I don't like the endless grind. And now we're here where you've got people who just want to raid or just want to do Mythic Plus, who just want to do this stuff, who are farming their fucking ass off on characters they have no intention of playing for shitty pearls. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's a it's a du it's a dumb way of doing it. He's right. It's dumb that you should go on your alts and buy the items on your alts and mail them to your main and identify them on your main. It's stupid. It, it actually is a dumb system. But you know what would be even dumber is to change the system that works for 95 99 percent of the population because raiders don't like it. Who cares? Like, if Mythic Raiders don't like it, that doesn't mean that the entire game should change. <laughs> for shitty fucking pearls, because for some reason that's now the best stuff in the game. Right. And they don't enjoy it, and I can see why they're angry, because it's like, why the, Why does this even happen this way? Why does this happen this way? Uh, and again, we'll probably get back to, well, you don't have to do it. It's like, we've already discussed that issue to death. I'd love to know your thoughts, right? I just feel like there's a better, more interesting way of going about this. And we're almost fucking there. Like, it seems like the idea is there. It's just not implemented. Well, All the he's very right about that. Let's do it, right? Let's do it. Uh, uh, Pre Preach is very, very right about that. Oh, oh can somebody invite me over to uh, a, a realm with this rare up? Uh, real quick, I just want to say, so the video obviously Preach pr brings up a lot of really good points that obviously Blizzard has been doing a better job in, in recent times. Blizzard has been doing a much better job in recent times of being able to create content and do things that are uh, a little bit more... Oh, here we go. Uh, so basically, I, I have no problem with like getting some raid gear and like content or like items that are really good in the game from like different weird like kind of off the wall sources. It's okay. It's not a big deal to me. Uh, obviously, whenever it's like all the best in slot pieces, that might be a little bit too much, like four or five best in slot pieces. That, that's that, that's pretty intense. So it's a matter of degree. But I, I like the idea of Blizzard creating new systems and new things in the game, uh, like like the items in uh, Crucible of Storms.